Now, for our first story, the Bureau of National Investigations, the BNI, has taken over investigations into circumstances in which an international oil firm forged the energy minister of Ghana's signature to lay claim to a piece of oil H oil rich area offshore south of the Cape Three Points. Well, the case was first referred to the Economic and Organized Crimes Office, but the police took over and arrested one Charles Zando, a former employee of Nura. However, it now appears the authorities have referred uh, the matter to the Bureau of National Investigations to handle. Mira Petroleum Limited is reported to have made an estimated $1.5 million using the forged signature letter as a basis to sell off majority stake in the oil-rich area to its parent company, uh, Godwana Oil Corporation in Canada. The parent company also used the letter as a basis to raise $40 million US million on the Canadian Stock Exchange. Joy News has learned that the scandal has forced the Canadian company to halt its activity on the stock exchange with latest information suggesting that the company believes it might have been duped. The last time the company traded um, off was on Tuesday, April 22, 2014, and that was the last time we heard about them. Well, former chief executive of Savannah Accelerator Development Authority, Gilbert Idi, says the authority could not ascertain whether a Sontaba cottage industry paid any money into the Guinea Fowl joint venture. Sada claims it entered into a joint venture with a Sontaba cottage industry, an exchange program to produce and market Guinea fowls. When controversy about the Guinea fowl project came up last year, Sada explained that the investment was a joint venture in which the private company owned majority shares. But Gilbert Idi, who left office almost a year after the joint venture company was formed, says he does not know whether Azontaba contributed any amount. Manasse Azuri Awene reports. In 2012, Sada entered into a joint venture with Azontaba Cottage Industry, an exchange program to commercialize the production of guinea fowls. The joint venture company formed as a result was named Sada Asongtaba Guinea Fowl Production and Marketing Company Limited. According to information at the Registrar General's Department, the two directors of the company are former CEO of Sada, Gilbert Sidu Idi, who represented Sada, while Roland Agambiri, CEO of the Agams Group, represented Asongtaba. Records at the Registrar General's Department also indicate that Sada contributed 12 million Ghana cities to the joint venture while Asongtaba contributed 15 million Ghana cities. For this reason, Asongtaba is the majority shareholder of 56% shares, while Sada owns minority shares of 44%. But Gilbert Idi says Sada contributed a total of 15 million Ghana cities to the joint venture. To the 50 million that was paid, 3 million of it was actually for mobilization of our growers, supporting those uh, facilities that the outgrowers need which a company may not have been interested because the company will want to go into direct production but we are insisting that instead of using the resources to go into direct production you must use outgrowers so the cost of using the outgrowers was to be borne by a separate fund which was three million so Sade's actual contribution as a uh, equity was 12 million Gilbert Idi was Sade's CEO at the time the joint venture was entered into he remained Sada CEO for almost a year afterwards, but he says he does not know whether Suntaba paid their contribution of the 50 million Ghana cities. You are aware of the amount of money Sada paid into this joint venture? Yes. The total being 50 million. Exactly, I know that one. But you don't know how much Asuntaba paid? Asuntaba was to pay 50 million, but they're not to did pay they to me. Uh -huh. Did they pay the 50 million? Not to me. Not to you, I know not to you. Uh -huh. The 50 million Sada paid was not paid to you. It was not paid into your account. It was not paid into Sada account, but you are aware. You see, what would have happened is that at the board meeting, this question that you are asking can be relevant. At the Sada board meeting, 
the Sada board could have invited its representative on that company's board of directors to answer this question. Are you not part but of the Sada board? Were you not part of it? I know, but uh, that question didn't come up. And nobody in the Sada board tried to find out whether Suntaba really paid or not? But the board hasn't really sat down to discuss, at the time that I was there, you know, the issue, let's see, there was a time when there was a schedule for the representatives on Asuntaba to come and brief the board. But something went wrong and that thing didn't happen. According to the rollout plan of the company, commercial guinea production was supposed to have started last year. But when Joy News visited the northern region and the upper west region, the structures for the guinea production were still under construction. The contractors had left the sites at the time of our visits. The only complete structure was the Upper East Region. This structure was already in existence before the joint venture company came into being. It was owned and operated by Asuntaba before the company entered into a joint venture with SADA. Our investigation, however, revealed that the company was paid by Jida to train 2,000 youth in Guinea rearing. The company was paid over 1,700,000 Ghana cities, but it did not train any youth. Attempts to get Asuntaba to respond whether or not they contributed any amount to the joint venture with SADA have failed. For Joy News, Manasi Azore Arene reporting. The Ukraine crisis has grabbed both international and local headlines in the last few weeks. And though Ukraine is not on the minds of many Ghanaians and the rest of Africa, perhaps because of its location on the world map, senior fellow at the Legon Center for International Affairs and Diplomacy, Dr. Vladimir Chidanso, believes the African continent, which suffered immensely due to the previous Cold Wars, will not be spared again. He spoke to my colleague, Marianne Toure. If we believe that whatever is happening far off somewhere does not affect the it's a child's play, because if more arms and ammunition is sent to the place, some filters to Africa, we are to lose. Again, note that irredentism is something we should fear in Africa. When Kosovo started, I wrote articles and I'm saying we are setting the stage for a world where national, uh, subnational groups will ask for independence and whatnot. And that's what is happening. South Ossetia did the same thing 2008. They wanted to get out of Georgia because Georgia wanted to be part of Europe just because Kosovo had done it. Transnistria, which is now in Moldova, they've done it. Abkhazia, they said Nagorno-Karabakh. So it's like when we set the trail in international politics, we've got to be very careful. What shows that several other irredentist groups in Africa and especially so because Africa is a hot pot of state. There's not a single state in Africa which is totally unique. We are all a hot pot of state. The 57 tribes in Ghana were put together and say, call yourself Ghanaians. More than 400 tribes in Nigeria were put together, call yourself Nigerians. Who knows whether the Kosovo's, the Crimeas, and the whatnots will not play in Africa. So we must be very careful when we say the thing is far off. We are all in the same boat in the international system. Well, back home, the Finance Ministry and the Ghana Revenue Authority say, contrary to some media reports, salaries, savings, deposits, loans, and payment with checks are all exempted from the new 17.5% VAT charge on banking services. In a statement released on Tuesday, April 22, 2014, and signed by the Deputy Finance Minister Keso Ato Forcing, both institutions made it clear that the new VATs will only affect the non-core financial services such as data processing, legal, accounting, actuarial, notary, and consulting services. According to them, the VATS Act 870 is not new and has been in place since 1998 and requires the banks to register for VATS and pay VATS on the inputs they use to render their services. The statement also indicated that the impact of the VAT is not the full 17.5% as speculated since VAT registered businesses can also offset the input VAT against their output VATS. Well, on AMBS today, we'll be having a lot more discussions on the subject of whether really the banks are expected to charge 17.5% VAT on 
uh, only financial services or other banking transactions. We have to turn our attention to some building and construction subjects. And cement prices remain the same as distributors and sellers of the building material and its product wait on government to reduce prices as promised. They are, however, hopeful. The reduction will take effect from today, Wednesday, April 23. The retail price of cement is expected to reduce by up to 5% effective April 22 following government's discussion with some major manufacturers. The price of the product had shot up steadily in recent months, largely due to the rising cost of production. But dealers say they are still waiting on government to formally publish the retail prices to inform the rate of reduction. When the news team checked on Tuesday afternoon, a bag of cement still sells between 23 and 25 CDs depending on the brand. For brickmakers, although they have no indication of the reduction, it will not have any impact on their pricing. We are buying that same price, 25 Ghana cities per bag. Are we going to see a reduction in the prices of your bricks if there's a reduction in the price of cement? We haven't increased it since the prices went up. It's still the same, so we will maintain the same price. However, distributor of gas and products, Emilia Asamoah, maintains they have been authorized to reduce their prices from 25 cities to 24 cities effective Wednesday, April 23. The gas and people has reduced their price a little bit. So we, the sellers, too, we have to reduce their price a little so people may buy it. So maybe today, there, we haven't made any sales. So maybe tomorrow going the price will become 24. For retailers, the cement price reduction comes as good news, but insists the hitherto increasing price trend of the product affects their businesses negatively. So hitherto kidney diseases and transplants was unavailable in the country, and one had to travel outside to receive treatment. So renal dialysis is now available to patients in Ghana, but how easy or difficult is it to access this facility? Emmanuel Ante has more. This young lady, Teresa, was found unconscious at the unit five months ago and was diagnosed with kidney failure. But for the compassion of the unit staff, the SHS3 student would have lost her life because she cannot afford the cost of the treatment. In Ghana, initial laboratory investigations and medications per each session of dialysis cost about 190 Ghana cities, which is very expensive for the average Ghanaian. This means, even though the technology to treat the disease is available, it is not easily accessible to the average Ghanaian. Reports say most patients who need this treatment badly are low-income earners and are breadwinners of their families as well. Therefore, their need to survive by paying for hemodialysis sessions might compromise the finances of their families. The main problem, I think, is chronic dialysis where the person's kidneys have failed completely and they have to be on a machine or get a kidney transplant. Facilities are available for dialysis. We can work you up for a kidney transplant, but the issue is money. You need to pay 190 Ghana cities at each visit to be able to have your blood cleaned of the urine that is stuck in your body. And that excludes three times a week. Three times a week. So that is 190 Ghana cities three times a week, and that is supposed to be the minimum treatment. Dr. Osapo also explained why the treatment is expensive. We don't reuse any of our stuff. All the consumables come from Germany, from outside. So we have to use hard currency to buy these things. And that is why the dialysis costs so much. So if you have the money, then you can assess. But the difficulty is that the kind of people who get the disease are not in a position to get money for the treatment. That is the worry. Transplant is about almost about 100,000. For now, we are charging 60,000 Ghana CDs to have a kidney transplant done. And that does not include the donor who is willing, who has given the kidney willingly. It's not like the person is selling the kidney and the cost of the kidney is part of it. No. 
this is having the surgery and also having treatment because at the end of the surgery your body needs to be informed the unit was made for 10 people but now houses 200 patients putting pressure on the facility according to the acting ceo of the hospital there are plans to expand the facility but this requires a lot of financial support from benevolent organizations and the general public at large to make the treatment more affordable. Emmanuel Lante, Joy News, Accra. Newly elected chairman of the new patriotic party, Paul Afoko, says he will be neutral in the party's flag bearership contest to take place in the latter part of the year for the 2016 general elections. In his maiden press conference on Tuesday, Paul Afoko said he would not countenance infighting among aspirants ahead of the Congress. The press briefing was delayed for close to three hours to enable executives of the party to arrive at the venue. Paul Afoko, who campaigned actively for flag bearer hopeful Alan Chermantin during the party's 2008 Congress, played down widespread perception that he would support a faction against the other during the upcoming Congress. The 2016 general election is crucially important to the Ghanaian people. From my extensive travels around the country, I have become aware that Ghanaians are waiting for the NPP. We cannot afford to fail them. It is for this reason that I think we cannot and should not allow narrow and parochial selfish interests to get in the way. No member of the past executive was present at the meeting, though Polafoko says that was insignificant to his call for a united front for the party. As chairman and leader, I want to reiterate my promise to the party and especially to future contestants for the flag bearership contest. And that promise is that I will remain neutral in the contest. I will also urge the other executives to do the same. We shall be honest brokers, unifiers and committed to the party and with the support of all members and sympathizers of this great party, we will work to carry this party into government. The NPP is supposed to elect a flag bearer two years ahead of the 2016 polls according to the party's constitution. Mm. We're heading now to the Ashanti region and about 200 vehicles with DV number plates have been impounded by an operational team of the Ashanti Regional Police Command. Owners of the vehicles are said to have violated the Road Traffic Act 2004, Act 683 and Road Traffic Regulations 1974, LI. 953. DCOP Nathan Kofi Boache told journalists in Kumasi the action was to constitutionally enforce the rules and regulations of the National Road uh, Safety Commission. Here's a report by Mahmoud Muhammad Nuruddin. Under Section 50, Clause B of the Road Traffic Act, DV number plate cars are unauthorized to carry passengers or goods for hire or reward. The use of the trade license for funerals, weddings, carrying children to and from school, consistent usage by vehicle owners outside business hours, between the hours of 6 a.m. and 7 p.m., among others, is also an offense under the law. Ashanti Regional Police Commander DCOP Kofi Boache warned vehicle owners in the region to obey the law to avoid being arrested by the police and subsequently charged with an offense. He promised the regional command would effectively enforce the law. DCOP Kofi Boache read the part of the law to the vehicle owners and gave copies to them. No person shall, and this one is not me, no person shall use a train license for the purpose not authorized by this regulation. And also under any of the following circumstances, when the Washada Kase put me for trade plate and yet the Ebeke King, one, funerals. Say so you cannot buy use trade plate to funerals. Two, weddings. Three, carry children to and from school. It is a two hundred million case. Can we even make go school? Aye, a prohibited. Four, carry family, relatives, friends, or any other person. Five, I don't hear me now. Consistently place trade licenses on the same vehicle 
like a registered number to be used daily by owners, friends, and relations. Among the culprits were some military men, police officers, immigration officers, businessmen, and public servants. Some vehicle owners who were ignorant about the law said they would immediately license their cars and educate their colleagues about the regulation. The vehicle owners were, however, freed without charge with a police warning letter and a promise to license their cars as soon as possible. Mahmoud Mohammed Nuruddin's report from the Ashanti region. Help is yet to come for over 1,000 displaced residents of a rainstorm that wrecked havoc in Daboya in the North Gunja district of the northern region. A heavy downpour accompanied by strong winds on Sunday ripped off roofs of buildings and flattened many other structures including school buildings. The roofs of more than 100 houses and 28 classroom blocks in five basic schools in the district were ripped off completely. The torrential rain also left four mosques and houses of police officers and the district police station roofless. Electrical appliances, foodstuffs and clothing of residents were also destroyed in a rainstorm. Affected residents who have been rendered homeless are still putting up with family members, friends, while some schools have become a new home for others. They are appealing for assistance from the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO. <laughs> Okay. Uh, she's saying that they were in the room at about 4 o'clock. They had their uh, roofing sheets going off. So they gathered all the children at one place. And now they don't have a place to lay down their heads. All their things have spoiled. Their food items and uh, some of their clothing were gone. But North Gunja District NADMO coordinator Constance Abiba Al Hassan tells Joy News that they are overwhelmed at the extent of devastation of the rainstorm and can only rely on their central office in Accra for support. The district NADMO coordinator cannot do anything here unless we write to Tamale. And that's why we are compiling all the things because we are a new district and we don't have anything in stock so unless we see the, nas the uh, national. So we called Tamale and they said we should bring the reports today so that it will be sent to Tamale. So we are looking on to NADMO in Accra so that they can help us with uh, zinc and cement because some of the houses fell. District Chief Executive for North Gunja, Saku Yahuza, has admitted that the district assembly alone cannot support the victims and is appealing to central government and other non-governmental organizations to come to the aid of the displaced residents. Yeah, national headquarters. Considering what is at hand, it would be practically impossible for the district assembly to be able to mobilize resources to support the affected victims. So we would want to, to, to make a passionate appeal to the government and to civil society organizations, non-governmental organizations, well-meaning Ghanaians, philanthropists, to, the, to come to the aid of the North Gonja district assembly. The <laughs> All right, so now it's a fact that bags have become one of the strongest fashion points for men here in Ghana. Of course, this was not the situation some time back as uh, handbags uh, was made or was what made a woman stand out, of course, usually in the crowd. Well, Mahmoud Mohammed Nuruddin reveals men carrying bags is a big deal as far as fashion in the Ashanti regional capital, Kumasi, is concerned. Call it a sexist battle or who's got the best bag. Believe it or not, men don't play with their handbags these days. If you ever thought it was only a woman's pride to spend thousands of CDs on a bag, then revise your note because the men have also got some valuables to keep in their bags too. And it does not matter how much one will spend to get what has come to be known as the trendiest bag in town. And it is indeed for men only. If you think the men can never 
catch up with their female counterpart, then you are guessing wrong because they now carry their bags just as women do and yes, with a lot of style. Wondering where the traditional wallet is? Yes, you guessed right, in a very strategic compartment inside the bag. Making a fashion statement is really important to a number of young men here in Kumase, and some go as far as carrying absolutely nothing in the bag. It's all part of the cool factor to strap on the bag and just let the world bow at your feet. Very cautious of bag snatchers whose target usually are the content of the bag. Most of these young men are always on the alert. I guess it has become obvious that it usually is a woman's bag. Don't worry, men's bag is not that mysterious. From phones, laptops, tablets, Glasses to digital cameras. The man's bag is indeed the epitome of the cool factor. Samuel and Alexander carry their bags for security reasons. I carry my bag because my personal things inside, so I have to carry it. I have to carry it everywhere I go, wherever I'm going, because I have some the, my documents, I have some things uh, that I have to keep with me always wherever I go because they can call me. You know the kind of job I do. So they can call me uh, for a job and I don't need to go to the house, like, house I'm going to take things from the house. So anytime I'm working, I have my bag with me. Unlike Samuel in Alexander, Gladys carry food stuff in her bag. But why do people carry bags? Does it really make you smart as some people will say? The average cost of women and men handbag is between 50 Ghana cities and 100 Ghana cities. Okay, so that's it. Uh, the bags. Uh, you know they have these other ones that they diagonally strap. Mm -hmm. The men. Yeah. Uh, and, and they are in, in, in various um, forms or variants or mod. Uh, yeah. What do they call brands. Gucci. I guess that will be Versace. the trend for the men in Accra because yeah. that's what you usually see. I, I, think, I think even Kumasi too mm. is, a, is, a, is a huge trend there, mm. especially those who trade. Yeah. They pull their monies. In, I mean, you just have to snatch one of them and you get to see the hey. stacks of money. You're yeah. saying that on TV? No, I'm not saying people <laughs> should go. I'm, I'm saying that just to see whether there are a lot of notes in there. All right. <laughs> we want to quickly run Why through the headlines for sorry. you again. Well, the Finance Ministry and the Ghana Revenue Authority say, contrary to some media reports, salaries, savings, deposit, loans, and payments with checks are all exempted from the 17.5% VAT charge on banking mm. services. You remember the subject about the forging of Ghana's energy minister's signature? Well, the Bureau of National Investigations, they've taken over investigations into the subject of the forgery case. Mm. So that's it for the AM News this morning. We're bringing you Spots. It's brought to you by Cowbell in just a little bit. Still, all right. <laughs> There's ongoing action in the semi-finals of the UEFA Champions League. But uh, before we look at highlights of um, the Tuesday's match between Chelsea as they uh, visited Vicente Caderon um, uh, to play Atletico Madrid, let's look at uh, the fixtures for today's first Capital Plus Premier League of Ghana. Uh, it will be on your screen shortly. And, um, well, basically, we're going to have Asante Kotoko. They will be hosting Wild Stars, Brekum Chelsea against um, Dwarfs, uh, Hearts of Lions, Mediema SC, Liberty Professionals, Amidans Professionals, and Kim Faisal. They will visit the home grounds of Ashanti Gold FC. Uh, uh, Dubiasi FC also will be um, hosted by Inter Allies. Hearts of Folk will visit uh, Second D and play Hazakes, Bachim United. They will be hosting Adriana Stars. Let's look at some local tennis and uh, Madan Tennis Championship will be commencing in Accra and uh, we're looking at the highlights. I guess it's always said that a, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a step. Uh, this is a step in the right direction. The guys are um, highly you know, psyched up. They are 
are willing to win um, the ultimate prize and uh, they are playing to the best of their abilities. But we can say that uh, there's been uh, lacking games. They've not, been, they've not had opportunity to play tournaments like this. So some of them are a little bit jittery and uh, they are not living. Uh, gradually, they're warming themselves up into the competition. But we're looking forward to see great uh, games ahead. Patriotrin has not been really encouraging. Um, we want to use your medium to uh, invite the general public to be here in their numbers day two come tomorrow so that at least they can give the guys their needed support. Um, uh, all tennis loving fans should be here to witness this um, uh, uh, beginning. Uh, in the near future, this is going to be grand. This is going to be mega. And we need all to be part of this great uh, beginning. Let's look at some UEFA Champions League match highlights. And uh, Vicente Calderon, well, that very stadium, played host to the match between the homesters, Atletico Madrid, and the visitors, Chelsea. Well, it depends on where you are. You say Chelsea perhaps got a very good draw. But the pundits think that, well, that's not too good at all, especially since they didn't score an away goal. It, it w if it was um, a score draw, then people feel that, well, Chelsea could have done better or might have perhaps nicked it in a home in Stamford Bridge. That very much, though, will take place next week, Wednesday. But uh, today, that is uh, this very Wednesday, we have uh, the other semi-final match, and it's a clash between uh, Real Madrid and uh, the German champions, Bayern Munich. Uh, so that very much between Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. Uh, so I guess we're waiting for that very much this evening. In the meantime, though, it's uh, 50 days to that very tournament, um, the Munda taking place in Brazil. And uh, just a few hours ago, there were some disruptions as there were protests uh, by a suburb. Um, residents of Rio de Janeiro, but we give you a build up to that very tournament, 50 days to the tournament. The 2014 FIFA World Cup kicks off in June and the trophy the teams will be competing for is back on Brazilian soil. Over the last few months, it's been touring the world, traveling to 83 countries and covering over 150,000 kilometers. It now embarks on a tour of the host country starting in Rio de Janeiro before ending in Sao Paulo on the 29th of May. On its base, the trophy has the names of the countries who have won the title since 1974, when the old Jules Rimet trophy was replaced. The last captain to lift up the old trophy in 1970, Brazil's Carlos Alberto Torres, fondly remembers the changeover of trophies. My old friend Franz Beckenbauer usually jokes with me by saying that he let me lift the old trophy so he could lift the new one because after 1970 it would be the first time. But I tell him that we wanted to win in 1970 so he could have the opportunity four years later to lift the new trophy. Torres has been given the task of taking care of the trophy and is being assisted by FIFA's communications director Walter de Gregorio. He believes we'll see a past winner's name added to the trophy again this year. We have had 10 World Cups since 1974, but only six national teams have their name engraved on this trophy. Personally, I believe we will not have a new name here after the final. It will be one of the six teams who are already engraved on this trophy who will win the World Cup. Well. Uh, Carlos Alberto Torres uh, will be a legend for Brazil as far as we're concerned, but there'll be a lot more living legends in that very Munda that will be taking place some 50 days time. In the meantime though, always be watching the Sports Channel on Multi TV and get the latest updates on sports. That's it for Sports on the AM Show. It's brought to you by Carvel.